In this segment, we're going to talk about sampling strategies for generating text from language models. So previously, we talked about how there are some strategies around taking the most likely next token. Uh, and then subsequently, we looked at using beam search to find an even higher probability sequence. But the third option that we outlined before was to draw a random sample from the model. Now, you might think, why would you want to do that? Well, for an application like machine translation, where you really want a like, high quality translation, you probably want to use something like beam search. But if you're using a language model for some sort of open-ended generation task, like let's say you're trying to generate a story, there may not be one right answer, and you may be OK with more variety. So this was one of the capabilities that started to arise with the GPT series of models, and particularly GPT-2. So, uh, one of the kind of headline examples that they had back when they released that work was uh, the ability to continue stories like this one. In a shocking finding, scientists discovered a herd of unicorns living in a remote, previously unexplored valley in the Andes Mountains. Even more surprising to the researchers was the fact that the unicorn spoke perfect English. So then we might say, okay, what does the language model like to sort of say next? Can it continue this story? And Beam Search eventually gets stuck in this very interesting loop where it just keeps repeating the name of this university again and again. So this is exactly the kind of case where uh, you know, we might say, OK, this is somehow not random enough, right? So then we can consider sampling. And if you do sampling from the model's distribution, you end up with stuff that ends up looking quite weird, uh, like they live in a remote desert uninter uninterrupted by town. And there's lots of grammatical errors in this. So what's going on here? So this phenomenon with beam search is called degeneration. And this is, arises from the structure of the language model that we're using. So let's like think about how this string actually gets generated here. So first, we uh, let's say we kind of were going along, and then we ran into uh, universidad as a token. And it might be the case that the probability of nacional given universidad is high. That's fine. And then autonoma, maybe coming after that, is also high. De, Mexico, also high probabilities. And then the model is kind of at this choice point where it then start, sort of puts a slash and then keeps continuing things. These might be low probability things, but once you start looping here, ultimately the probability of this entire sequence looks pretty high, right? Like it's found this uh, sort of name that it can generate with high probability, and then it's just going to keep looping this, and Beam Search is going to think this is great. So th these words are likely given the previous words, but the whole sequence is unlikely. Um, there's a separate set of models called globally normalized models, um, which include things like energy-based models that can be used to judge this. We're not really going to talk about them in this class so much. Uh, they're sort of computationally hard to use. But basically, uh, you know, we want to do something more random than beam search. We don't want to just find this like highest probability thing that's kind of degenerate. Okay, but then this sort of Goldilocks style sampling is then too far in the other direction. It's too random. So what happens here? If we say the distribution over the next word given, they live in a remote desert uninterrupted by blank. Well, there might be a whole bunch of different options here. Uninterrupted by roads, towns, people, civilization, etc. And maybe town is here, but it's a little bit less likely. So in general, there's going to be a lot of options. And maybe the top, you know, most of the probability mass uh, accounts for these. But then there's going to be a long tail. And let's assume that this long tail has 10% of the mass. Well, then what happens is that on average, every 10 words you sample, you're going to get something from this 10% tail. And if you think about if you're going to sample 100 words, in expectation, you'll get something from the 1% tail, so like even rarer stuff. And if you're going to generate a story, you don't really want it like going completely off the rails every 10 words or every 100 words. So nucleus sampling is this idea to correct for this. And what it is is basically chopping the distribution, truncating it after p percent of the probability mass, if you sort the tokens from high probability to low probability. Then you just renormalize and sample from the distribution that's left. So it's a relatively simple technique to implement. 
uh, all you need to do is get, have your options and sort them and then truncate them. And it turns out it works pretty well. So in the, the paper by Ari Holtzman et al. that presented this, they compared the uh, stories generated through various different methods across several metrics. Um, first is perplexity. We see that nucleus sampling achieves like decent perplexity, not as low as greed or, greedy or beam search. Um, but greedy and beam search achieve very high self-blue and very high repetition, which basically means that they're falling into these loops and repeating themselves. Uh, and then this last column, hues, is this kind of human-in-the-loop scoring function that nucleus sampling also does quite well on. So it seems to be able to balance uh, the sort of naturalness of the story while still maintaining uh, you know, quality and reasonably uh, good likelihood from the perspective of perplexity. You see it's much lower than the perplexity from peer sampling. So when we talk about decoding strategies from language models, we're often going to think about these three. Uh, max decoding or greedy decoding, beam search, and then nucleus sampling. And if you use a, a large language model API like ChatGPT, uh, the outputs are very often come from an approach like nucleus sampling. That's the end of this segment.